The service is beginning in one minute. Service begins in 30 seconds. Good morning to today's time of worship together. It's been an incredible time of preparation uh, for the Sunday, and we look forward to be able to share this day, a holy day, the Sabbath, a day that God has set aside to worship with you. Uh, this Sunday is traditionally known as Elders Gate Sunday. Uh, for those who are uh, clear about the and understand the Methodist tradition, uh, John Wesley, who is the founder of Methodism, uh, on uh, on Aldersgate Sunday, went to Aldersgate, and uh, um, I love it because in his journal it speaks about him being reluctantly uh, going, and he had read a, a preface to the Book of Romans. In other words, a bit of an introduction into the Book of Romans, and he speaks about a moment where he was assured of his salvation, uh, and uh, Paul will speak about it later on, uh, and he speaks about his heart being strangely warmed. Uh, but as I said, what I loved about his journal entry was he speaks about how reluctantly he went that day uh, to, to meet and have some time uh, with other Christians. And so I don't know uh, what state of mind you're in after over 50 days of lockdown. I don't know where you are uh, in terms of our country, in terms of the socioeconomic uh, struggles that we're facing, uh, poverty, uh, and continuously trying to understand where it is that we go um, as a country united in trying to figure out uh, COVID-19. So whether you've got here this morning reluctantly or whether you're excited about a time of worship or whether you are ambivalent or whether you are with your family or by yourself, uh, I want to just say to you um, that you are really, really welcome uh, today. I look forward to listening later on to, to the sermon. Uh, I look forward to being part of the worship uh, and it is my prayer for you and for your family and friends uh, that this time will really be a special time of connecting with each other and with God. Let's pray. Lord God, you are the God most high. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you, God, that no matter what is going on er around us in our country, uh, in our own lives, that your love for us is const consistent. Father, we pray, Lord God, that as a church and as a people, we would be the light in, in this world. And especially, Lord God, now, today, as we continue to face uh, extreme challenges of the disparity between the rich and the poor, as we become aware of, of those who have been admitted to our hospitals and the, the rate of malnutrition has, has quadrupled, uh, Lord God, we know that we as a church and as a people have a responsibility to go into the world and to make a difference. We pray, Lord God, that today as we worship you and as we hear your word, that indeed, Lord God, that our hearts would be strangely warmed and that we would be assured of our salvation. And so we commit this time, we commit this worship, the sermon, and every aspect of today's time together into your hands. In the name of Jesus, who is our Savior, and that we can be sure of. Amen.
Gesù namaro Gesù Yeah. 
Thank you, God, that right now in the midst of everything that we are going through, that we can still raise a hallelujah and worship you because we know that you are good, Lord. We know that you are the source of the strength that we need right now. You are the place we need to go to to get the perspective we need, Lord, every single moment of every day. Lord, I pray that you would help us to stay connected to each other and most importantly to you, Lord, even though... We can't gather as the local church right now, Lord. We are still the local church. We still have purpose and meaning in these times, Lord. Right now, we just, right now, we want to forget about anything else calling for our attention. We don't want to hurry this moment, Lord. Just to rest in your name 
starting to notice you are speaking. Let us pray together. And Lord God, we just thank you for this time of worship. We thank you, Lord, that you are always our way maker. That you always make a way. And that we thank you, God, that we can wait in anticipation for your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, like always, we miss being with you in person, but are so grateful to be able to connect with you wherever you might be in your homes, um, wherever you are listening to us from all over the world. It's really good to be able to just be in connection with you. And a couple of things happen in the life of Grace Point that I'd love you to just connect with. Don't forget that we have a morning devotional that we put out every morning for six minutes at eight o'clock in the morning to just get your heart attuned to what God is doing in your life. And at the moment, we're going through from Ascension Day, which was on Thursday, a 10-day journey focusing on prayer. You'll remember that Jesus said to his disciples, I want you to wait wait in anticipation for the Holy Spirit. And we've been waiting and it's not too late to join us. You can download the devotional. We'll send you the links in the service as well as on our emailer. And you might want to connect with us on our connect group. Have a look at the number that just comes up on your screen and just connect with us and we'll be able to send you a WhatsApp of that devotional. And just connect with us every day, six o'clock in the evening and focus in on what God is doing in our lives during this time in preparation. For, for Pentecost Sunday. We also have two Bible studies running. We have two Bible studies running on a Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. Please, would you consider just joining us? And you know we have an amazing team that, that meets with us every single Saturday at 2 o'clock, a group of psychologists that sit with me, and we just, just like share together. It's like a, a group where we can just share and experience what struggles that we're going through when it comes to living under this COVID pandemic time. We have the Jane Now team that are amazing, and they've done incredible work. I'm going to hand over to Flonnie now, who'll tell you a little bit more about how you can connect with what's happening in the life of young people in our church. Thank you, Jackie. And so we'd also love to invite you to check out the Gen Now content that is available on our various social media pages. Please do check that out. It's an opportunity for young people to also just enjoy church from home. In addition to that, every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m., we've got our Hot Topic Bible Study with myself, Shoni, Elsa and Rebecca leading on Instagram, Zoom, and Facebook. It's an opportunity for us to go in depth around the topic that we um, engaged on on Sunday evening. So please do check that out. And also do be on the lookout on our social media pages for our worship windows. It's an opportunity for you to just soak yourself into some intimate worship. It's a great opportunity of fellowship and a great opportunity for you to just grow in your faith formation journey. We look forward to connecting with you. Please do connect with us on the various social media handles. Do enjoy the service. Thank you. Good morning to all our kids and parents out there. We are so excited to invite you to come and watch our online lesson today. We have two brand new additions to the slot. Firstly, our amazing worship with Kezi. She will be teaching the kids the actions to the song and together they will be having so much fun praising and worshiping God. Then we have our Doodle Studio. This is where we will teach and instruct the children how to make and create their craft for the week. It is going to be so much fun with lots of giggles and laughter. Don't miss out. Our lesson focuses on the Great Commission. We will be teaching our kids in this slot how to go and tell the world about Jesus and what he has done for us. Before I go, I would just like to remind you guys that we are in our 10-day Kids Prayer Adventure. Every day up until the 30th of May, we will be posting a new prayer video for the kids to watch. Please don't forget to go and download their prayer journal and help them to complete it. They can do this at their own pace and time. The videos will also be online for the foreseeable future. Thank you so much for everything that you are doing for our children. And remember kids, keep on praying. 
Hey everyone, it's Gilda from Grace Point. Today in our Lesson for Gap, we are going to be continuing with our Fear to Faith series. At times we can feel like we are trapped by our fear, but God desires for us to have freedom. And so we look at this today. Don't forget that every day we send out a 60 seconds of scripture voice note on our parents' WhatsApp groups. Please contact Ilza at gracepoint.ca.ca to be added to this group. This week at Edge, we're going to explore what it means to resist conforming to the standards and patterns of this world and instead holding on to our values in light of what is happening around us. Please join us. Check out the sermon on Instagram, on YouTube and on Facebook. We would love to connect with you. Thank you so much, Lonnie, for sharing what's happening in the life of Grace Point. Friends, as you know, um, Similo has been recovering from an operation, and he hasn't been very well this week. And we just want to thank you for your prayers. Would you continue to pray for him and just hold him? And this week at Edge, we're going to explore what it means to resist conforming really to the standards and patterns to of this world and, and instead holding on to our values so in light of what is happening things. around us. Please Listen, join us. Check out the sermon on you. Instagram. Instagram on YouTube and on Facebook. We would love to connect with you. We've been able to give out over 3,000 meals um, in this last month of May. So thank you so much for that generosity. We have sent out more details about how you can continue to give. We just thank God for the incredible relief that we've been able to bring during this time. And now Mukhari will lead us as we pray for the offering. Good morning, Grace Point, and welcome to the service this morning. We are glad to have you join us, and we trust that you and your families are coping during this difficult time. As we approach this time of giving, we are reminded that we serve a generous God, a God who encourages us to give and so become more like him. Our God loves a cheerful giver. So let's pray now as we prepare our hearts to give to the works of his kingdom. Please note the various options uh, for giving out your contributions, which are shown on the sidebar. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for your life and your glory. We know that you are a God of all possibilities. We thank you for your grace, your abundance and provision. As we prepare our hearts for Pentecost, we are reminded that Jesus is Emmanuel through the gifts of his Holy Spirit, our comforter, our everlasting friend. We thank you that we can worship separate but together. We give thanks to the tithes and offering we have received through the week and will continue to receive. We ask you that you bless these gifts and that these offerings may be used wisely to build your kingdom. We remember those who are experiencing financial difficulties and those who are uncertain where their next meal will come from. Continue to give them strength. We pray that as we listen to your message, we take it to heart and we use it and remember you that you are in charge. We pray that for those who are affected and infected by the COVID virus, continue to give them strength during these times. We pray for our leaders and our command team, give them wisdom and discernment to make the best decisions for our country. We pray for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Si es ulu, upa que me ga culu, upa que me, upa que me. Cherubim seraphim, atale eku babaza, uinwe. Seraphim, Ashale, Ekubabasa, 
Lessons this morning are taken first of all from Isaiah, where we'll read the first six verses in chapter 12. In that day you will say, I will praise you, O Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day, you will say, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord. For he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. And then we read in Romans, in Romans chapter 5, and there verses 1 to 11. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. And finally, we read in Luke, selected verses from chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where, would he, where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go. I'm sending you out like lambs amongst wolves. 
Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. And then it speaks about what they've got to do when they come into someone's home, what they must do when they enter a town. And then in verse 17, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you raised up your servants John and Charles Wesley to proclaim anew the gift of redemption and the life of holiness. Pour out your spirit and revive your work among us that inspired by the same faith and upheld by the same grace in word and sacrament, we and all your children may be made one in the unity of your church on earth, even as in heaven we are made one in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, as Gary told you when he welcomed you, today is... A, cel a double celebration in the church. First of all, it is Ascension Sunday, and secondly, it is the celebration of John Wesley's conversion at Aldersgate. He speaks in his journal, which took place on the 24th, at, uh, 24th of May, 1738, at a quarter to nine in the evening. The one thing that stuck in his memory about that experience was that he knew at that moment that he was truly loved. And for him, that represented a somersault in his faith. Now, let me just tell you, he had grown up as the son of a priest in the Anglican Church. Um, and the, the family was deeply, deeply religious, followed all, all the guidelines of the church, worshipped regularly. But it was at this point in time that he gained a new insight, that all the paraphernalia sometimes that is part of the trappings of the church somehow did not penetrate into his mind in the way that God's love touched him on that night and so I suppose this is this is a season in which all of us do two things first of all we recollect the moment when we understood or when we allowed God to come through our open door or when ultimately the Spirit indwelt us. That, that moment theologically is called the moment of justification. It's the moment in which it is as if we had never sinned and we're welcomed in even though we are sinners, to celebrate a place of belonging. That's a huge, huge transition from alien, from rejected, from enemy to God, as he says in Romans, we in actual fact move into a place of belonging. Now, now let me just say to you, in this time of covid 19, one of the difficult things that we've had to deal with, particularly in the distribution of food all over the place, 
is that sometimes there has been a prejudice against foreign nationals because they're not considered as belonging to this place. And this has left many of them desperate, hungry, starving, fearful for their lives. And so, but if you can imagine, if you can put yourself into their shoes and imagine what it feels like, you've run away from a place because you have felt that your life is in danger and you come into a new community. And so in this time, this essence of what is really part of the Christian's community's foundation, the opening of the door to the undeserving, that we, we need to be very careful about the people that we think are undeserving of our holy presence. That's the first thing I'd like to say to you. The second thing is that it seems as if there is no darkness in us that cannot be penetrated by the love and the light of Christ. I think for many, many people, this period of lockdown has been a period of profound isolation. And in the isolation and in much of the silence and the immobility and the loneliness, there is the promise that Christ can penetrate that hopelessness and enable us to be included as we are including one another in this time of worship. And so it's very, very important in this lockdown period that if we cannot be with one another, we keep connection. One of the churches, for instance, that I'm connected with in the United States have divided the church into groups. And they have a leader for each group. And each leader makes 100% certain that they contact every member in their group at least once a day just to find out if they are all right. And that penetrating of the loneliness, that penetrating of the isolation is a gift to all of us. You can do it. You can choose a small group of people that you follow up on a daily basis to make 100% certain that they know that they cared for, that they know that they loved. Because it is almost as if on this day, as we remember what happened to Charles and John Wesley, what happened was that God penetrated their alienation and brought them close, brought them right to the epicenter of his love and his forgiveness for them both. But then, of course, it is also very important that it doesn't just stop there. You know that love without action is meaningless. You know that love that doesn't contaminate the rest of society is meaningless. And so the second great gift that John and Charles Wesley brought to our Christian tradition again was from the Gospels. They took the word seriously and went out and reached to the poor, to the dispossessed, to the broken, to the forgotten, and made a difference. At this time of lockdown, there are communities that are more vulnerable, really, than many others. One of those communities is the communities that live in informal settlements. Some of the communities that find themselves desperate at this time are the homeless. And so as a church community, our vigilance about those vulnerable and how we intend to reach into their presence, into their poverty, and particularly with our gifts of food and care and love, determine that our gospel will not be embalmed in a building. I at, at times think that this 
this pandemic has been a gift to us to help us to recognize that this gospel cannot be imprisoned. We can, in actual fact, express a reach into those parts of our community that can be easily forgotten as we rush past them in our busyness and in our accumulation of wealth. And so John and Charles Wesley then spoke about the process that happens after we've been loved. The process is something which sanctifies us or makes us holy. And that that is not something that we wait for when one day we come to pie in the sky, but it's something that we actually engage with here and now. And so I, I, I want to encourage you to recognize that this message is for all of us. Imagine that you are one of the 72. And Jesus today is commissioning you to go out, to tell the good news, to express God's love, to show kindness, so that this gospel has hands and feet in you. I want to close by reading just a verse or two from John Wesley's conversion hymn. And you will hear in the words that he speaks the alienation that he felt in his sin and the powerful penetration of God's love into that space of rejection. Where shall my wandering soul begin? How shall I all to heaven aspire? A slave redeemed from death and sin, a brand plucked from eternal fire. How shall I equal triumphs raise or sing my great deliverer's praise? Outcasts of friends, to you I call harlots and publicans and thieves. He spreads his arms to embrace you all. Sinners alone his grace receive. No need of him the righteous have. He came the lost to seek and save. The last verse. Come, O oh my guilty friends, come, groaning beneath your load of sin. His bleeding heart shall make you room. His open side shall take you in. He calls you now, invites you home. Come, O oh my guilty friends, come. Let us pray. O oh God, we pray, especially at this time, for our journey with you. For those of us who aren't sure, penetrate our uncertainty and give us a deep, deep sense of being loved by you. Dispel our excuses and help us to grasp your love for us now. And for those of us, Lord, who have been on this journey for some time, we pray that you refine our commitment to you in our deeds, in our words, in our commitments, in our care for the lost, the poor, the lonely, the bereft. We pray especially for those, Lord, who at this time lead and make decisions for communities. Grant them your wisdom, especially as we negotiate easier lockdown conditions. We ask that you give us a vigilance about the most vulnerable in our communities. Particularly, we would ask you to surround our medical practitioners, nurses, doctors, who are right at the very forefront and very often are most vulnerable to the virus. We also pray, Lord, for those who are broken and lonely and grieving and lost. 
and ask for your healing, for your accompaniment, for your presence. We pray for ourselves and ask that by your Spirit you refine our integrity in our relationship with you and with one another. We invite you in. Love us. Journey with us, O Saviour Christ. Amen. as Methodists, we get to celebrate 
Elders Gate Sunday, on a Sunday where we just know that today is a day where we know that John Wesley had to mark this moment because his heart was strangely warmed. Everything was different after this. It kind of reminds us that we are a people that live out our faith all shaken up from the inside. So I just hope and pray that you would be able to have an experience that shakes you from the inside. Please join us tonight at six o'clock and every night at six o'clock in this next week as we look at how God can shake us up from the inside as we ready ourselves for Pentecost. Let's pray together. And so Lord God, we pray today that you would shake us from the inside out. And may we be open to receive your spirit that warms us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you and stay safe.